there, my name's Jill Tiny, I'm from Collaboration Global, and this is our podcast, Being Human, Hidden Depths. I'm going to be interviewing some of our members from Collaboration Global, and they're going to be sharing with you their extraordinary lives. Although they would probably believe they're just normal, everyday, average humans, but they are extraordinary. A bit like you and me, we all have our story to tell. We've all been through difficult times and we've come out the other end having learned an extraordinary amount about ourselves that we can share with others. So I think you'll find lots of things that will resonate with where you've been in your journey as well. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Welcome to Being Human Hidden Depths with Collaboration Global. My name is Jill Tiny, and I am very pleased to say we're welcoming one of our new members this month, which is Mr. Jim Doyle. Jim, welcome. Thank you very much, Jill. It's a pleasure to be on here. Thank you. You have a beautiful sunset image behind you. And I'm if taking. I may, if I may correct you, it's a sunrise. It's Lanzarote. Beg your pardon. Years ago. <laughs> I was just going to say whereabouts is it? So, what part of Lanzarote? Uh, up, up near the north, uh, a third of the way up to the north, out, out in the country. So we had a beautiful place, which we picked by dowsing or muscle testing. And uh, we ended up with this amazing, amazing little place. And there was a hill just up there where I was going and recording a meditation and things like yeah. that first thing in the morning. Lovely. So. How stunning. So I, I love that when you've got, been away and you can have that image and it just kind of connects you immediately to that feeling that you had when you were there. I've got my screensaver on my computer, which is overlooking the Minac Theatre in Cornwall with the beaches, uh, Porth Kerno beneath oh. it. Uh, yeah. And it was spring. Um, so it was like May time. Um, but it looked like it was the Caribbean. Uh, and it just every time I glance at that it, when I'm working, it's like. <sighs> and just takes you straight back there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I know we're going to be talking a lot more about um, our emotions and our feelings along this conversation. So I think you guys that are listening now are going to be fascinated by Jim. He's not the average kind of um, business owner per se. He's not your regular um, accountant or business coach or tech no. marketing person. He's coming from a whole other perspective. And that's why I'm very excited today to be sharing his story oh. with you. So before we get into the how you do what you do and what you do, uh, what attracted you, first of all, to Collaboration Global? Why are you one of our members? Well, actually, I saw a number of your posts regularly on LinkedIn. Oh. And I responded to a few of them. And somehow or other, we connected. And we, I thought, you told me, uh, you, I'd seen a mention of Collaboration Global. And I, we exchanged a message. And you went, yeah, okay, we had a chat. And I went, hmm, that's very interesting. And I couldn't be precise and say, that particular thing there is relevant, but it sounded, uh, somehow it resonated with me. Yeah, that's a good word, actually, resonating, because mm. a lot of people uh, come, uh, and we had one particular chap whose name I won't mention yet again, um, but he said, I don't know why I'm here, but it just feels good. It just yeah. feels right. And it is this kind of emotive space of like, I can't put my finger on what's special about this, but I'll work it out as I go along. Uh, mm. And one lady, uh, the very first meeting, she went, hey, you guys are my peeps. This, this, is, this is fantastic. So I think when you say it resonated, it really does make sense that um, you're not using your mind to go, uh, so actually, how am I going to create income from these people? And how am I going to target? Um, what, what's, am I going to measure it by? It's a heartfelt... Um, emotion that yeah. leads you forward rather than the logic of yes this is a good idea and hopefully as time goes on the heartfelt emotion will confirm it with the logic that you go wow I'm glad I'm here so I'm really pleased that although you saw us on the business um, space of LinkedIn um, there was enough there that you went this is curious and interesting Oh, ah, well, if I may, from my point of view, you see, you can't have just the business side without the personal side, which is so true. The, the really important part. Yeah. One of my pet hates is when people go, it's nothing personal, it's just business. Oh, okay. Like, nice to meet me. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, it's always, always personal. And that's why we wear our heart on our sleeve. That One of our core values is love. And a lot of people go, oh, that's a little bit fluffy. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a superpower. Stuff got, is good. Love is, is the core of everything we do and mm. who we are. So we, we have to walk that way. So enough of us. I could talk about Collaboration Global all day. Jim, tell me, where are you from? 
<laughs> so when we, went, when, when we went to America, uh, every time somebody heard an English accent, it's like, oh, where are you from? What do you do? So I'm well, going to do the same to you. <laughs> gee, not quite that far west, more like Southern Ireland, Southeast Ireland. Beautiful accent. Uh, Lovely. But I'm here right now in Cambridge and I've been here Oh, longer than, I'm not sure if any of the younger members have been around, but I've been here a very long time <laughs> with, a few, <laughs> with a few interim trips to London and Middle East and places like that, but yeah. Middle East only briefly. Um, so, yeah, so from there, and I decided, completely alien concept, I wanted to be an electronics engineer, oh. which was like, Really? Not a farmer? Not a priest? No, none of those. <laughs> and That's what you're normally pushed into, is it, when you're from Ireland? Well, back then, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was greeted with, what's that? I said, well, it's like mending radios and inventing things. Mm. And I was very fortunate with some help, parents and so on, of actually finding a position with a as a sort of informal apprentice with a company in Dublin, which part, turned out to be part of the Pi Group, which is now Philips. Oh, okay. Yeah? And which was fascinating because I, I loved it because of the poor chief engineer, I mean, he was tearing his hair out because Jim kept asking him questions. He didn't even know the answers. <laughs> oh, I bet you were great at school, weren't you, with the teachers? <laughs> uh, a bit like that, yes. Yeah, young scientist of the year in Ireland. And, and <gasps> You're like joking, that. really? Well, no, no, I wasn't the, I was in the, in the, in the, contest but uh, I was the only one from our college for I don't know years and years and years uh, who'd been there did a project on vitamin c nothing to do with electronics of course and but it's the uh, inventor in you it's, it's the curiosity yeah. in you that was oh, all, always curious always mm. curious and love connecting to animals to nature not necessarily the farm animals but the you know the, the, the rabbits and the pheasants and yeah. all of those so I was always deeply connected to nature and uh, but taking a leap forward, mm. I uh, taking a leap forward in time. Uh, I was in Dublin for some years and offered a transfer to Cambridge postgraduate training for a year. It's like, whoa, the university and the technology was like, yeah. yes. <laughs> so when I came here, for me, it was the, the mix of people then because it was fascinating. There was all these people from all over the world, you know. Like, multiple PhDs. I shared a flat with somebody with two PhDs. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and the, the people from all over the world speaking multiple languages, whereas in Ireland we were then we were 99.9% .9 Irish people. Yeah. You know? And that was the real eye opener. That that really evoked something something in me. And I loved it. But uh, a few years later I stayed here. Yeah, I was a bit like the old razor advert. I liked it so much I stayed <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I eventually I got a position at Cambridge Consultants, which was then the probably it was certainly one of the highest tech research uh, places in Europe at the time, mm. not just the UK. And uh, and that was like four years there, which was amazing. It was after, it was just a real hotbed of uh, imagination, creation, innovation. Yeah, uh, a lot of laughs. I bet. Uh, it, it was it was amazing, and uh, then I, I, but it was always intuitive as well. So always very sensitive and aware. And in those early days, I was about twenty two. Mm -hmm. I was on holiday uh, in Channel Islands with my girlfriend at the time. You know, nervous early days, first foreign wow. holiday, etc. Yeah. And I woke up in the night, and sort of images of flames and my dad uh, shouting in distress. <gasps> I was like, what? So it hit me so much that I went and got a big pocket full of coins, as you did then, called the international operator for back in Ireland to see the village mm. shop. And my parents' home had been burnt down the night before. Oh, wow. They, they were okay. My brother was okay. But uh, that was a huge wake-up call for me. And uh, I think that was a formative moment where I uh became aware of many things and started investigating many things certainly not electronics you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a different world but at that point were you just going oh that was a coincidence or were you going oh no um, no i knew i had lot, lots of other things as well but that's that's a highly measurable one right, right. Yeah. yeah and uh, lots of other things as well like working beside a, a colleague on, on one occasion working on this exotic uh radio frequency 
project. And he was really pushing the, the limits of this particular project. And he said, oh, I don't understand why it's not working. And I was familiar with what he was doing. And I'd say, oh, you know, reduce C2 by 7%, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. How do you know that? Right, uh, and he got, that, that was Jim, they were used to Jim doing this kind of thing on occasion. Uh, but when it got to a few occasions on the same day, I answered the questions before he asked me. Oh. At that point, I went, I went quiet. <laughs> so you didn't, you knew, you were confident enough in your intuition to offer it to other people in quite highly technical environment, um, but you still didn't know why or how at that point. Didn't even think about it. I, I just knowed, as they say. You knowed. <laughs> yeah. so I like that expression. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So presumably um, this is a big part of your life now because I know from our conversations that this is a finely tuned instrument you now have at your disposal. Um, so tell us the story of how it kind of came from a, huh, I can do this stuff. I noticed this stuff to actually yeah. taking it further. Well, yeah, uh, just a couple of a couple of snapshots in between. Mm. Um, got my travel in the Middle East and heads of state and all that kind of thing, and mm. bulletproof cars. And I wasn't making it, but I was helping out on them. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> and uh, didn't like London. Came back to Cambridge, joined the startup, which then became a, so I was all through there to research manager, and then became a PLC. I was made redundant after a number of years, mm. ten years plus. And uh, then I set up I set up my own business, which was not sure what to do. You know, I had a moderate financial cushion I was okay with. Mm. Made a couple of false starts and then ended up setting up a small electronics business with a few subcontractors and, and a few empl- part-time employees. And um, did that for years and years and years and a few other ventures as well mixed in. Mm. But always the underneath the awareness, the sort of spiritual side of your life was always there, lots of interest lots of research anyway so around the millennium i had a minor issue uh, nothing serious yeah so then it ends up now being a bent finger mm. uh, yeah. and uh, went to the doctor went to the consultant said oh yeah deeper trims contracture that puts me in the same category as maggie thatcher and ronald reagan i'm not sure if that's a positive or a negative okay writing finger it was called so it's like hmm, didn't like his proposal went to a mind-body-soul exhibition and this Korean lady ran her hand down my back, sort of this far away, mm. and said, somehow that's usually connected to the back of your heart. And I felt chi energy for the first time in my life. I was like, what the hell was that? Oh. And that was my wake-up call, the start of it. So what did that feel like? I have no <sighs> idea what chi energy feels like. Foreign but incredibly friendly. Okay. So it wasn't a scary prospect. It was something that was... No, yeah. nothing like that scared me. Mm. Uh, there, there are lots of other episodes on it for several podcasts. I lived in, I lived in a, a haunted sort of, you could say commune, more or less, <laughs> for, for a while. <laughs> and so I was quite at home with what would be scary for a, a very large number of people. Right. Idea, but this wasn't scary. I ended up doing some work with them, and then I had some uh, wacky experiences, too difficult to explain, but really disturbing experiences. Mm. Um, quite happy to another time, but not on an introductory thing. And uh, it was their work is all about any problems we have are based on what our ancestors, and what we do is a series of ceremonies to. If you like, bless them, appease them, etc. So, not exactly your average English um, situation. No. So, the stuff that was happening to me, it was like, okay, these guys are trying to make this happen, so we have to pay them lots of money to stop it happening. Kind of thing. That was the immediate logic. I can now clearly say, many years later, mm. that that certainly wasn't the case. This is what was going on with me. This was my stuff, mm. and I did a lot of work with them. Spent a lot of money with them as well. Had extraordinary experiences there. Uh, it was as if... Uh, viewers, are you ready for this? Go for I it. I hope you are. Because at the last syllable of the last ceremony, it was as if I was hugged by 30 of my ancestors just like that. 
It was as if you were what? Sorry, say that again. Hugged, literally hugged. Hugged, hugged, sorry. I said, yes. in, my, in, my, in, in the back of my head, I think you said hung. And I was like, oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> hugged no. Far, more, far, more, far more friendly than that. Wow. <laughs> no, no, hugged, literally. And uh, I was aware of this same, the same thing happening to other people at, at, at that same point. Right. But, and just had incredible experiences. But, Got to the end of this, and there was something missing. There was a big emptiness in here. I was mm-hmm. still doing work, doing, you know, doing, doing my work and so on, but I've done all this, and really, I suppose, it wasn't even quite as strong as dissatisfaction. It was like, mm, there's something missing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But a lot, how old were you at this point then when you were saying oh. this? We're talking about the year 2000. <laughs> okay, so quite young. <laughs> yeah. well, I guess it did. Got, but Quite some people get to a certain point of life, don't they, generally, whether they've got uh, any uh, unusual gifts or, or any um, experiences in their life, they just get to that point and they're like, there was a hole in my heart and something, I'm not sure what it is, whether it's a, a relationship, whether it's a spiritual relationship, whether it's just feeling inadequate of themselves and feeling unworthy, there's this space that they need to fill. But you were you kind of aware of a space or were you aware of the space the way there was something that you were aware of that you needed to connect with closer? I think it would be fair to say that for quite a long time before the millennium, I was carrying a, a heaviness in here right. rather than an empty space. Right. And in fact, there's a, there's a passport photo of me from somewhere in the 90s, very early 90s, something like right. that. And I look like I'm carrying the world on my shoulders. Okay. Wow. Seriously, I was just heavy wind glasses. Yeah. You know, oh, and compared to now. Yes. And um, well, you hadn't identified that there was something going on at that point. It was just that's how you thought you I'm were. Like an awful lot of people, an awful lot of people I've worked with, male and female, they are, as you say, at that stage of life. It's a fairly broad band mm. of age, age-wise and situation-wise that there's something is not something is not right. Yeah, okay. something, but you can't even put a name on it. Can't put your finger it, on it. Yeah, not even, you can't even just point in the sort of over there somewhere. You know, it's yeah, something's not right. You know, maybe you're not sleeping right, and you're not mm, and sort of little, mm, 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 and maybe going through the routines of what you're supposed to be doing, if there's mm-hmm. such a thing, mm-hmm. and you're not comfortable, but you've no one to talk to about it. You haven't recognized it, and you're terrified of exploring it possibly as well. Yes, yes. Until you have a crisis. It's funny because this morning, it's probably not funny at all in your, in your world, um, I watched a video with Simon Sinek, and he said exactly that. He said, to the outside world, I had the perfect life. You know, my business was great. It was thriving. Yeah. I had a wonderful family, and I was going to work, and I was doing everything. He said, and I was plastering on the smile, and I was miserable. Yeah. And, and maybe he didn't even know it. Well, I think he knew he was miserable at that point, but it needed somebody to reach out to him to kind of jolt him out of it, say, what's yeah. wrong? And then it's like, oh, I've got to admit it now. Somebody spotted this. I can't keep faking it. And he had to admit, as you oh. say, and then you've got to go on the journey of why. Actually, on that very point, uh, in my last years at the company I worked with, yeah, um, I, okay, I ended up being promoted into a place probably about well above my level of comfort of competence without the adequate support in the company right. and there are all kinds of things going on and i didn't have the experience i didn't have the training running a team etc cetera, etc cetera. and so then i was kind of side shuffled etc cetera, etc cetera, and sorting it out and then it was like i don't like it here anymore but i couldn't really say so i mean yeah you know, my wife realized but i wasn't happy there but what was i going to do and it's like oh the company was growing and going to another new site and everything else so well, i'll kind of stay to the next step and oh well, maybe See i might get made redundant you know yeah. that kind of thing yeah but the real moment of truth you you might have seen on one of my linkedin posts uh, uh, two months ago was about six or eight months afterwards we were around you know, good friends, you know, children the same age, barbecue, bar, Sunday barbecue, yeah, mm-hmm. having a beer, having a laugh. And uh, my friend turned to me and said, Jim, it's really good to see, it's really good to see the old Jim back. You've been a miserable beep for the last two years. Oh, wow. Two years. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. And that is a moment of note. Mm-hmm. Yeah? 
That really is a moment of note. But that was way before. So that was, what would that be? That was when I was in my startup phase and had, I wasn't quite sure where I was going and so on. So that was, that was a whole different story. Mm. Um, but so there are moments like that when you think, oops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when, when somebody else notices it in you, you can't, and you have to admit it to yourself then at that point, yeah. that it's like, mm. Oh, I was quite happy to. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's true, isn't it? And what good yeah. friends, they've still hung around, even if you were a grumpy so and so for two years. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when did you start up the business that you're running now? Uh, I'll come to that in a moment. Yeah? Okay. Which is, so in this, looking for, looking for a cork to plug the emptiness, emptiness in mm. here, uh, I heard about an introductory weekend on energy healing. Right. And on, by the Saturday evening, I knew I had to do a three-year course. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Mm. Um, I worked with somebody from the other end of the world. I identified all kinds of things with them. They identified all kinds of things with me. And I had just astonishing experiences there, seeing, just seeing things that were, I knew to be real, but certainly not of the physical world. Right. And uh, just amazingly glowing, positive things, yeah? Mm. Angelic, if you like, yeah? Mm. Uh, and <laughs> one telling my wife's response was like, how long, how much? <laughs> She's Mrs. Sensible, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, especially after all, all the other uh, time, time and money. Yeah. And uh, that was five weeks a year residential for three years. Oh, gosh. Yeah? And I'm told on good authority <laughs> yeah. that uh, for, the, for the week before going away, I was unlivable with. Oh. Yeah? And the week after I came back was, where the hell's Jim gone? Who, the, who are you? Oh, wow. I mean, it was deep, deep stuff. Yeah. Uh, really, really, really deep and uh, astonishing experiences. And somewhere, you know, one of my first, and then I had the, the challenge of dealing with what was what I believe to be our natural abilities that we all have to one extent or other, just like we can walk, talk, whistle and chew cornflakes, <laughs> which is that, and, and whatever, else, climb trees, you know. Mm. Um, but it was, you know, I worked with a um, lot of homework clients, if you like, and somebody with double vision and balance problems for years and years and years it was gone just over half an hour. Gosh. And... Somewhere, it must have been maybe just after, after my training or whatever, I was, I was thinking earlier, I think, oh, that one came up to talk about. There was a, we, both of us went to a sort of spiritual healing workshop in, uh, in Spain, where there, a big mm. group of people. And uh, so, so a couple of days in, a Spanish couple who are still good friends, uh, we, we'd met, uh, she speaks fluent English, came to me at the morning and said, Jim, you able to help this lady or this lady's husband? I said, what's the problem? And uh, she explained, and the lady didn't speak any English and no, no habla espanol. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I think that's how it goes. And uh, explained that uh, her husband had been there at the workshop. He wasn't well, he had a problem with his chest. And I understood he'd gone home. And I said, oh, I've got 15 minutes. I'll nip up to the room and see what I can do. And I tuned in to him somewhere, wherever he was, and I had a sense that his lungs were full of dark, sort of gritty smoke, mm. yeah? and worked on getting that clear, and so sort of it came from his teenage years, some, some age or other, and worked on that and came back down. And at the tea break, or lunch break, um, came up to me and said, what did you find, Jim? And I said, well, I explained, and... Uh, as it was being translated, the lady's eyes were going wider and wider and wider mm. because he had been, he had gone from Spain to some European country to work in mushroom caves when he was 17. Mm. Fungus in his lungs for all those years. Oh, wow. But That's... not only that, what I didn't know was he, I'd misunderstood he hadn't gone home. He was in the next room and I didn't know. Oh, and he was back there a lot better. Instantaneous yeah. result, yeah. 
But it's, it's space and mm. time don't matter. No, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. But it was dealing with things like that, which on the one hand are like, wow. And on the other hand, uh, who am I to do this? Where are the, you know, all this kind of godly stuff coming in and, you know, mm. religious background, you know, Catholic background, all that yes, kind of thing. Yes, yeah. But, so it's, it's a bit like it's all right for Jesus to do it, but who am I to, um, you know? There's a, there's a lot of that about. Yeah. Mm. And, so uh, when you first got with your uh, got together with your wife, um, did you share this kind of you know, stuff that you knew that was around? Oh you? yeah, but that was she wasn't freaked out. <laughs> no, no. I mean, we've been, we've been married uh, well over thirty years, so. Um, so she's discovered so, it along with you. She's kind of seen. Yeah, that. Well, I had, I had a, I mean, I, I've nearly always been much deeper into this than, yeah. than he has. But now we're on, on a much more, uh, much more, a place of greater understanding. Yes. Much, I mean, really, really good understanding, which is fortunate. Uh, the interesting thing is that most of the people who I trained with either were already divorced or did divorce before very long. Oh. Uh, now, what happens is, you know, as they say, you know, you start doing the spiritual stuff and you lose all your friends. Well, that's not necessarily true, but it mm. can be partly true. Mm. Like you do, if you start doing something significantly different, yeah, then the mm. level of commonality you have yeah. with your friends just shifts. Yeah. And what you realize, <clears throat> what we realized was that, oh, I haven't seen so-and-so so -and -so in... Forever. Yeah. Must be yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like, oh, oh, it doesn't matter. It's not important. But obviously it didn't matter the other way around either. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a question of saying, go away. <laughs> That's not. It literally is to shift. And you can call it vibration, attitude, whatever. It doesn't mm. matter. Mm. Um, these things happen. It's well, like yeah. goes to like, doesn't it? It's like a magnet. Yeah. You get attracted to people that are passionate or have a mm. belief in the things that you believe in. Um, mm. I mean, the name of church uh, doesn't just go with religion. It literally means a group of people. So whatever, very good point. Yeah, whatever very your good beliefs point. Are, are going to attract the same sort of people, yeah. which, you know, very acutely um, connecting is what collaboration global is about people mm. that are passionate about making an impact in a positive way for the rest of humanity and, and the world mm. so of course we want to hang out together and learn from each other and share and support and help and encourage each other to reach their full potential yeah. so i can totally see why you know it's like sliding door moments isn't it people come they get to see what you do and then it, it's going to be slightly um away from you know the old NLP um, description. If you're, you're either a go-to person where there are goals and rewards, or you're an away-from person where yeah. I don't want to go back to that stuff because I've been there and I didn't enjoy it. And we're kind of we're in one of these camps, which is how it propels us forward. Um, and I think it's the same with yeah. our friends. You know, a lot of us have our friends because they're historical. We went to well, school with them, or we met them at college, or whatever. Well, that's right. Yeah. And yet you have I'm nothing sorry. in common with them anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, what, what I actually did, even back in my, uh, yeah, when, I, when I first started in Dublin, was, you know, I had a few of my friends were, were, were there as well. I literally just went, and yeah, I, I realised I wanted to know or something that I didn't really have that much in common. I, I wanted to travel a separate path, and I just started off a new path, new, uh, new people, you yeah. Yeah, because uh, it was the right thing for me to do at the time. I think so, yeah. and it's interesting how a lot of people they they change job and then everyone they, you know they leave everyone behind in that job and they go to the next one. So the friendships they made there kind of fade away. I'm I'm a bit uh, I am a keeper. I kind of keep if I meet them once, I kind of keep them in my back pocket forever. You don't get away from Jill. <laughs> <laughs> a large Just, back pocket then. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> so um, as you as you know, Jim, I'm open to. Um, I love anything new. I, I love anything I don't understand. I love anything I can't prove or disprove. It's like this unknown quantity of, um, I also don't believe in right or wrong. So I don't think anyone can say I'm right, you're wrong, because it's you, what your definition of right and wrong is. So yeah. I'm fascinated by how you do what you do. And also um, some of the stories that you've told me so far kind of blow my mind. Um, do you want to share one of your best ones? I mean, I think just the story about 
um, your parents being in a fire was you, know, you hear that about twins don't you but you mm. don't really hear that from just you know joe average kind of thing and you're believing that everyone has this gift so yeah. another question further down the line is how can we tap into it for ourselves but can you give us one of your fantastic stories of something that's happened that you can't possibly maybe you can't explain maybe you can um of just how all of this energy healing works well there's one thing that comes to mind which is when i was in the sort of haunted place I used to live in, um, which I can't explain. I definitely can't explain. But I love those. Uh, <laughs> I, can't explain. I was reading some book early hours of the morning, yeah. and um, there was like all of a sudden, it was like <clears throat> there was this incredible presence above the house outside, and it wasn't oh my god oh wow. It was just oh okay. It was so powerful to me that it was, I can't say it was, I'm not going to say divine presence or godly presence or whatever. It was just a massive presence. So it wasn't negative no, or positive or? Neither. Right. Just totally beyond my comprehension. Okay. Totally and utterly. And that is an extremely memorable moment. So you're sitting there reading your book and this presence appears. And it's just like, boom. It's, it's like... What did you do? <laughs> because it was so enormous. Yeah. I sat there and acknowledged it and went, what was I going to do? Run? This was, this is beyond, you know, if it, was, if it was a nuclear bomb exploding, I can't do a lot. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or if it's a, uh, you know, a swarm of drones or something, you know, nasty ones in, in the present time, you can't do a lot. Yeah. And, but it wasn't fearful and I wasn't afraid. Right. I was just nothing. It was just like zero and not nothing because it was outside my terms of reference. I had mm. no terms, zero terms of reference for it. And overwhelming didn't apply. Mm. It was kind of beyond overwhelming, if that makes sense. Did you go and ask any of the others if you're sharing a house? Anybody else here? I did, yeah. No, nobody else was aware of it. Nobody that's else was aware of it. That's annoying. <laughs> but I do believe, I do believe that, I think it was the following day, there was some kind of major military um, exercise in the area, which was, this was back in the, in the 70s. Right. Uh, which was, there were a couple of comments made by a few people I picked up accidentally, which were, mentioned and it was like hmm that's strange but no. that's all i have I, I you know i were they connected i don't know mm. uh what it was i still have no idea yeah so that is a a big huge moment for me um lots of little ones in terms of natural sort of natural explainable things mm. um I remember going to uh, with the with the dowsing. I was introduced to dowsing, you know, with with, with rods or with a pendulum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was introduced to that when I was about five years old. Um, but I, and I've been doing that to one level or another all my life. And, and sorry, by the way, what I've now done, where I'm now at uh, in 2020, is I've integrated the energy healing and, and growing awareness with my dowsing or kinesiology, if you like. Um, right. I just use muscle testing, you know, just, yeah. just like that to yes, no's and, and my sensitivity. So what I do is I apply, I combine all of those. And what I can do usually is identify the, when the blocks, the, the triggers of the blocks in somebody's life comes from, or they're ancestral as well, which I do as well, tens of generations in some cases. Yeah. And clear them one by one by <clears> one. <throat> and they're, vitality and their energy comes back up or their problem substantially reduces. Wow. Whether it's in health or career or sales and marketing, or the same can apply to a business. Right. Because a business is consciousness. It's an idea. Yeah. That's an idea. If you have a, a smallish business, then you can get situations, for example, where, say, there's a partner who is positive okay and they leave amicably mm. yeah? 
if there are loose ends left around connecting to them, mm. their name's still on the website in some hidden corner or something like that. Not even, everybody's happy. Mm. That energy, that energy is not focused into the forward movement of the company. It's the past. It's interesting, yeah. yeah. And of course, if there, if there are old toxic things like, you know, uh, an ex-director gets fired and this kind of things and takes some yeah. people with them. There's yeah. a lot of toxicity there. And if that's, and that can be cleared, can be identified and cleared uh, distantly, the other side of the world. Wow. Yeah. And that can bring the company, the business back into harmony mm. and allow it to move forward. I can imagine that even if you don't um, have any acknowledgement or belief in what you do, just by tidying up and getting rid of loose ends and knowing that there's that, that definite line of whoosh, let's yeah. move forward. It, yeah. It's, it propels you. It's, it generates an energy that's got a new, uh, a yeah. new impetus. Hasn't it, it literally so. does. It, re it releases energy. It's like having little, like Gulliver and Lilliput. You've got all these little threads pulling you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's such, such a good point. Yeah. So uh, what you're able to do, if people don't know what the, the thread is that's holding them down is you're able to go and, if not identify, at least to cut it uh, and give them the opportunity to. No, 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 oh, no? no, no. okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Right. That's, again. That's a lovely classic statement. So, okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I have a perfect example, and I'm sure a friend will forgive me if they come across the, this podcast, but I'm not mentioning names. No, so, okay. <clears throat> um, okay. It's commonly said that uh, you, know, you, you cut the cords that bind. Mm -hmm. Okay. But every relationship as far as I know, starts out essentially in a good way. Yes. Okay? So there is good, positive quality in the relationship. And then stuff happens. Things happen. And things go wrong. Yep. Yeah? And it somebody goes, mm, I'm not speaking to you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So you've got the good bit. So if you like, you've got two wires. You, you've, got, you've got the what is it, the red pill and the blue pill, like in the Matrix. Okay? Oh, so you've, yes. got, you've got the red cord between you and, you, and you've got the blue cord between you. Okay. okay. And the blue one is the good one, yeah? And the red one's the bad one. Okay. So you get the big head clippers and go, chunk, uh, yeah? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, both are going to get caught. Cool. Not only that, you're leaving two dangling ends going out in space. Okay. Yeah? See, I work a lot on visual imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so that's supposed to resolve things. The way I work is, the how I work is another story, but... The way I work is uh, visualizing, intending that all the sort of negativity in, in, the, in the relationships, whether it's a business or a person or between a dog and a, sorry, between a, between a person and a pet cat or whatever, it doesn't yeah. matter, yeah, yeah. is that harmonizing it. So the, the, the red bit just disappears or becomes blue. Right. And... And, then, and, and possibly reconnects better to where it is on, on their like energy body, yeah, right. which is the equivalent of the physical body. Right. And then things are a lot better. But um, a friend uh, was um, in, their early, in their early days of, on, on the spiritual path of learning how to do things. And there were two people close to them who were constantly like, Argh! you know, constantly arguing. Mm -hmm. And it was... Um, Somewhere, so, somewhere abroad, and uh, they write intentions. They ask for the cords to be cut. Shortly afterwards, they contacted me and got help. They were horrified. What yeah. do you think happened? Go on. The two people turned their backs to each other and wouldn't speak to each other. Oh, that's not helpful. <laughs> no. So I explained to this person, it was like, oh, what have I done? Uh. And I said, you haven't done anything wrong. You've got exactly what you asked for. Yeah. So then I helped them and we, we did some work together to, if you like, uh, reconnect the cords in a harmonious way. Right. And then things were an awful lot better for the first time in goodness knows how many years. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's lovely. Uh, it's interesting, uh, isn't it? Yeah. And whether... From my point of view, whether it's a uh, family, a business, a person, a tree, a plant, it's all the same. They all have their energy. They all have their consciousness. Mm. Mm. Um, now, you're asking me about 
something tangible. I think tangible, maybe you're looking mm. for. Something that's happened to me is uh, I've done a lot of dowsing, dowsing work and gone to stone circles and things and gone with the British Society of Dowsers. And we went to a, a stone circle down in Somerset, I, I think it was. Yeah. And somebody there was telling us about, well, yeah, there's this particular stone and if you just lean on it, you get there's this force pulls you away. Going, yeah, right. Okay. It does. Oh, wow. Seriously. Yeah, and yeah, a whole group of us, and yes, you could say, you know, psychosomatic. Yeah, and yeah. And all the rest. But you feel this force grabbing hold of you and literally pulling you back. And most of the men went one way and most of the women went the other way. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Now, what's real and what isn't? I know. You know, I've heard a story of uh, somebody in Wales where they discovered uh, by dowsing an old stone circle. But right. it was buried under the ground, so it's not on the National Register. So mm-hmm. they were able to reconstruct it because you're not allowed to disturb the, the ancient monuments. Mm. And uh, they got it all done. And, you know, week, weekend, lots of sweat and blood and mud and a few bottles of beer and so on. But there was one smallish stone. And they were they had effectively not able to move it. They really struggled. Right. It wasn't enormous compared to the other ones they'd moved. And it was to go there. And this was going on for quite some time, becoming a, a major issue with them to finish it off. And then somebody said, isn't it supposed to go over there? Sometimes you have a stone circle and then you have one about 50 yards away, right. so like a, a tail stone. Yeah. And I'm told that apparently it was like the stone almost got up and went itself. It was just... Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't want to go. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, because you would. It yeah, it, it's astonishing. In know. a ver- in a very small way, um, I, I've kind of experienced that from the point of view. One of our members came and she told us. I can't remember the phrase she used, but she was very much uh, into health and eating good food. And she said, "Your body will tell you what food is good for you." And we're like, "Oh, how's that then?" So mm-hmm. she said, "If you just hold the food in front of you, uh, sort of at your heart level, yeah. um, shut your mm-hmm. eyes, and then to ask the food or ask mm-hmm. your body, is this food good for me? Is this banana good for me? And then wait and see what the response is." And we're like, yeah. oh, "What's the response? What do you mean? What's the response?" She, your body will tell you. Mm-hmm. And if if it, if you go forward then yeah. you're, it's okay. And if you go back, the body's saying, no, it's not great. So we're all like, yeah, all right then. So the whole room, seriously, is about 25 of us. Yeah. <laughs> she, she bought this carry bag full of food. And, we were, uh, and you know, you just stand there and I'm like, well, I don't know if bananas are good for me or not. Let's find out. Um, and she said that it was bonkers. She said, you, yours was so dramatic that I, everyone else was just kind of not nudging backwards and forwards. But I was like, oof. Yeah. <laughs> and also backwards if it was no good I said find me an orange quick bring me an orange I know yeah. that doesn't do me any good and it was just so fascinating that the cynics that were in the room that tried really really hard to disprove this theory of what was going on even they couldn't help themselves when right. they were given something and, uh, and even when it was in a uh, wrapping and nobody knew what was in it it was happening and they'd unwrap it and go oh that's why I went forward or that's why yeah. I went back or exactly your body amazing. your body knows yeah, our bodies, our bo- bodies, never mind whether it's this bit, this bit, this bit, whatever, yeah? Our bodies are far smarter than the smartest MRI machine or CAT scan <laughs> or whatever on the planet. So you're like way beyond it. Because not only that, you know, I feel when I'm working with somebody or even unintentionally pick up a vibe, I got, might get a sort of stomach like, oh, what's going on here? Mm. Is this mine? No. Somebody I know, no, somebody, somebody looking at the website. Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> it's like, okay, thank you, but just go away. When yeah. I just accidentally let it go. We're all capable of that. Yeah. As long, as, to some level or other, like we are not all Olympic champions. And we're all capable of such things. We're all capable of helping people to have the insights they need mm. to, uh, let, to unknock the problems they have in their lives. Yeah. yeah, and I whether that. whether it's you know Jim's version of healing that he learned, or somebody else's, or spiritual healing, or Reiki, or whatever, it doesn't mm. matter. It doesn't matter. And yes, there are there are charlatans, there are good people, there are not so not good people. Yeah. All kinds, just like in every other walk of life. Yeah, absolutely. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, on an occasion, there's somebody I was. <laughs> I think you like this one. Um, 
So on the occasion, there was somebody, one of the people I was training with, uh, was living in Spain at the time. Mm. We were having a chat on, on Skype. Uh, so this is 2004 or something like that. And uh, for some reason, the water in their house was horrible. It was undrinkable. So they got some from a well so, some distance away and had various containers of it. I said, I said Jim, you're going to do something about this water because I've been talking about this. Yeah? Mm. And I said, oh, let me see. So I put down my headset. And uh, they, they weren't on video, it was just on, on Skype call or something. And uh, I put on the headset and I just did my sort of tuning into it. And I heard a scream come out of the headset. <laughs> what that about? I didn't realize she had a pendulum in her hand at the time. Right. And as soon as I tuned in, it nearly flew out of her hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. And then how did they get the water sorted? Well, it, it, I believe it tasted better. I can't remember. You know? Yeah, a long time ago. Um, yeah. So, so if, if we have all got this in us, this possibility, as you say, it's a bit like um, being an Olympic athlete. Yes, we, we can all run 100 metres, but some of us are going to run faster than others. And then if you train as much as an Olympic athlete would, you're probably going to be on, on a par. So it takes effort. It takes training. It takes um uh, to you, you've got to uh, flex your your intuitive muscle, as it were, so that you can yeah. tune in. But what yeah. could we do to try and start the ball rolling? If we wanted to try this out for ourselves, how would we go? How would we go? Oh, I think that was me. Rather than oh, was that a coincidence? I don't really know. Is it just a case of uh, building up the coincidences? And so, where would you start? Where would you start? And do you teach this? I don't know. Do you teach this? It's time I did. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's time I did. Um, I would go back to what you were talking about. Your body knows. Right. Okay. And the, the, biggest, the biggest, biggest challenge that we all have is the logic in here. That's a... Yeah. It might be your granny, the gremlin voice or whatever it is. It's yeah. A... yeah. And if you're always second guessing yourself, yeah, then uh, that's a bit of a challenge. But I found that it's like, like that person was teaching you, saying your body always goes forward for yes and mm. backwards for no. I disagree. Right. Substantially, that's true. Right. But you have to be able to calibrate. So you're being an instrument, a finely tuned instrument. Mm -hmm. So just like any other finely tuned instrument, even if it's the video box, it has to have some kind of calibration in there. Yeah. yeah? There's the engineer so you coming have to out. Calibrate right? yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. On the, base, on the basis that, uh, so what question is there that you can ask, or what mm. two questions are there that you can ask that there is a definite yes and a definite no to? Right. And there's not many. No. Because you might say, yeah, so, well, you forget the hot date, because that in, it depends on, yeah, <laughs> we're going to hot date tonight. That depends on about a zillion possibilities, yeah, right. including your intention. Um, if you say, I know, piece of bread, a slice of bread and cheese, yeah, is this good for me? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Is this good for me now? Is much more important. All right. But that's not good enough. Because right. what does the word good mean? Uh, yeah. You know, is it is it my is it my hankering after uh, cheddar cheese? Yeah, with with chives or whatever. Is it? I'm gonna have this. You know. Mm. Is it your inner, your inner gremlin voice that says, I've got to eat this to make me fat, that's mm. actually riding? So I've reached, over many years, I eventually got to the two questions that you can ask, and even then you have to be very careful, right? And one is, take your age, and it doesn't matter what age you are, mm -hmm. but it's especially important if you're close to a decade. So say you are 49 or 51 and a half. Right. Yeah. So what the two questions you ask in this way, and so you just test it a few times and then you can calibrate using this. Yeah? And there are lots of other ways of doing it, but this is the easy way. No tools required. Yeah? Okay. Which is just, yeah, take a, just stand straight, yeah, TV off, headphones off, phone turned off, computer off. Time for you. Mm. Maybe do it in the bathroom with the door locked, you know, where you're not going to be laughed at. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah? It was just hard to find space sometimes. Yeah? And just ask it. So you take, you take your age 
and then you go down more than five years to the previous decade. Okay. So if you are 47, you know, then um, you know, the question is, am I more than 40 years old? Right. Right? And so you're just, just asking your body, sort of put your hand on your heart and just go, close your eyes, am I more than 40 years old? And see mm. which way your body goes. Okay. And just... And so, and kind of thank you to your body. Talk to your body as if it's a conscious person. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, and just ask it to ask it a few more times, so you get the average kind of response. Because it may be very weak. You mm. might go slightly sideways or diagonal, or you might go. So no expectations. Right. So try that three or four times. Okay. And if it's like you bang your head on the wall with it going forward, maybe maybe you've got the idea. Maybe just try it once then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So stand in the middle of the room. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And then the next question is so and just thank you. And just just sort of take a breath and just shake your arms and so on. Yeah. So refresh yourself physically, as it were. Yeah. And then do the same thing again and ask yourself. So what do we say you were 47 or something? Don't ask yourself if you're more than 50. Ask yourself if you're more than 60. Okay. So you go so there is no way you're going to be start being a smart ass in here. And going, oh, I'm 41 and a half or 37.9 or something like that. Mm. We do. It's crazy stuff. Mm. Yeah. So then, uh, so, so then, you know, and then, so am I more than 60? No, definitely not. But check it a few times. Right. Now, it is possible that you may get the same indication that the body goes the same way for both. Because uh, it's not, this is why I say it's not always crystal clear. You you can be energetically out of balance right. from trauma, stuff that's happened to you, you know, scary movies when you were a kid, you know, granny died or a car crash yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And that can really knock you out of alignment. So and I, I, can't, I can't give you an instant way of, do, of, of doing that because uh, just to give you in context, I have a couple of testimonial videos from clients who used to have freezing cold hands and feet. Dangerously so, so they couldn't drive a quad bike without electric oh, heating wow. and so on. And I did the videos three years after I worked with them, mm. and they still had primarily warm hands and feet. Now that is the, that is this is totally in context uh, to what we're talking about. Mm. Because what that is is there uh, in the trauma of whatever happened to them. Doesn't matter what happened. Uh, they've scared out of their body. Right out-of-body experience, if you like. Mm. But they don't know it. And so they never come back in again. This is not scary stuff. This is, happens all the time. Mm. Yeah? And they don't come back in again. And so by energetically helping them to get back into their body mm. and, and helping them to stay in there and they may need some visualization of guidance to help them. They may bounce out again if it's been really bad for a long time. Mm. Because it's a massive change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Because yeah. you know, it, even in a very simplistic way, you might be a, a chronological age, but if you have had upset, um, and I get that even if it was upset of a different generation, if that was a, an upset, you're going to feel older than your age, aren't you? You're going to feel world, world <laughs> weary. Another one. You have to be very careful, even with the ages that you're looking at, and you're looking at your birthday's age. Mm. Never mind, never, never mind your cellular age or whatever you want yeah, to say. Yeah. I had somebody challenge me on this. I said, "Well, yeah, how how are you doing on here? Where, where do you want to go with this?" You know, mm. we're talking about how, how many birthdays you've had. Right. Yeah? yeah. So when you're 30 you're years old. And on the subject of uh, being out of balance, I uh, remember somebody at a dowsing event, he couldn't douse. One hand with the rods, which cross over for yeses and so on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, with one hand worked perfectly and the other one was like, you know, a bird with a broken wing. Oh. Just didn't respond. And I had a word with him and said, would you like some help? And he said, Ooh, yeah, yes, please. And I said, well, something happened here. He you know, looked, looked, this is my heart. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. What happened here? I don't know. Eight years ago, something like that. So yeah. I just tested to see when it was. And he looked a bit sheepish. And he'd been, something like he'd been pushed off a chair by his, his little, little nephew or something like that. Back then, had a, a cracked rib. Yeah? And 
I just did a bit of work on it, balanced, balanced up the energy, working perfectly. So you can be carrying around these mm. uh, traumas, if you like, like a badge of honor. Yes. Uh, forever and not now. So if you go to heal someone, well, you could be here all day. I'm just looking at the time. Answer this question, though. If you, if you go to heal someone and they're not ready to be healed, or as you say, carrying this trauma around like a badge of honor, it's become part of who they are, you're not going to be able to help them, are you? Are you? That depends. It's not okay. Good. It's, it's, it's complicated because sometimes uh, there's some other aspect that's out of balance mm -hmm. that's causing him to hold on to that. Right. Or it's possible to see where, if they, if, if they want to be, fix their problem. Yes. I've only ever had one client who I had to show them the door. Oh, okay. Literally, over the years, <laughs> and that was ages ago. And that, they had a particular pain, pain, and I explained to them very carefully before they came about the situation and what it was and what we'd need to work with. And I, I said to them, okay, we did some work. And I said, okay, you need to forgive this person in your life. And they said something like, I don't really want to repeat it, but it was like, yeah, they could oh, my God. Oh. It's like, no way. And they said, nope. Let them do that. And then some. Mm. We don't forgive someone for their benefit. We forgive someone for our benefit. So they were, that, was, that was my early days where I was learning. Otherwise, yeah. I, would, I would have known before they came and said no. Uh, yeah, couldn't yeah, be. yeah. But, well, listen, uh, Jim, this, this has been oh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> and I have a feeling we're going to have a part two coming along at some point uh, to carry on the conversation. Um, it's just we don't know what we don't know. And that's what I like about this world and about the people that we attract is that um, we don't have to understand it all. And we don't have to have all the answers, but we can certainly be open to what's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you're part of our community and that we're going to be able to share what you know and what your experiences are. And uh, I'm really looking forward to be able to support you on your journey to get this message out there and to share with more and more people to see how we can help them. Um, I read a book uh, a few, two or three years ago by Dr. Fabio Mancini, um, The Power of self-healing hmm. um and it's along these lines it's not quite the same as what you do but it is a, about the case of having that self-belief um and when you believe something is going to work for you then you're halfway there and i think this hmm. intuition that we have um you know I've, I've got intuition from a point of view if i know if i'm going to work well with someone I know uh, if the phone rings, uh, who it's going to be before yeah. I pick the phone up. Um, I can be thinking of somebody and then the phone goes and all sorts of things like that. But to me, that's an accident rather than design. And I realize that actually when you have that intuition muscle, it's like any other muscle. You've just mm. got to keep working it and making it yeah. stronger. And trusting yourself. Yes. But the yeah, biggest, so, lesson, mm. biggest lesson of all is be comfortable being wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because once you can accept that, that you're not, you're not perfect, you're not always right, you are going to get it wrong, mm -hmm. get your ego out of the way. Yeah. And that's a big lesson for a lot of people, and it's a big struggle for a lot of people to... Because we're brought up to, you know, have that face of everything's fine and I'm right and, you know, I know stuff that's and that. I'm expert. That's, and... that's another discussion. But, but yes. you take the, the whole Olympics and, and the promotion system and everybody has to be winners and better and better yeah. and better. Yeah, yeah. Nobody praises the... Well done. Yeah. The, the, good job, mate. But that's as far as it gets. Yeah. It, oh, this is, there's so many um, alignments along the way that we can talk about for, for yeah. many, many times. Thank you for joining us today, Jim. Really appreciate it. If yeah. somebody wanted to get hold of you, what's the easiest way for them to connect up with you? Uh, Jim J. Doyle. The J is important. That's J-I-M-J-D-O-Y-L-E. And that will, I'm primarily active on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and will be, more, will be more on Instagram and Facebook. And otherwise, my website, which is becoming shinier, is differentlight.org, as in see yourself in a different light.org. So maybe the .org part, which was a kind of a dream a long time ago, may well come to fruition with the Collaboration Global. Hopefully, absolutely. We never know where it's going to take us and, and where that fruition can get to. But with your, your clearing channels, and I think I'm going to be snipping all the way <laughs> through to get, get rid of those know. negatives. I think it's a brilliant idea. 
Harmonizing. Harmonizing, that's the word. I've written it down. I was making lots of notes while you were talking. So I've written <laughs> harmonizing down. I've underlined yeah. it. So thank you again. It's been absolute joy. Um, and look forward to our, our next chat another time. Uh, so if anybody, wants, if anybody wants to come and meet Jim in person, he comes along to our Collaboration Global meetings, which are always the last Tuesday of the month. You can find out about them by going to Eventbrite uh, and looking for Collaboration Global. You'll find us there. Or you can go onto our website, which is collaborationglobal.org. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you at a meeting soon. Thanks again, Jim. Okay. Thanks very much, yeah, Cheers. Bye.